There's an article on io9 by a George Dvorsky called Eight Great Philosophical Questions We'll Never Solve. I'll link the article in the description. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to answer these questions on the fly, so to speak, in the order that George answered them. Okay, number one. Why is there something rather than nothing? Why not? Nature is weird and wonderful and oftentimes terrifying. I'm not going to talk about the anthropic principle because I'm not an academic, fine-tuned universe, if you say so. I mean, it's... It's a useful question in that it leads to more thinking and more questions. Blunt answer, though. Why is there something rather than nothing? I don't know. Yeah. Question two. Is our universe real? I think it most likely is, but we can't know for sure. Maybe the wool is being pulled over our eyes by some super advanced civilization of aliens. Perhaps we are plugged into a simulation of sorts. But I don't see it as likely. What is real? That is a good philosophical question. Hmm. Stimulating. Number three. Do we have free will? Well... I subscribe to the compatibilist outlook, so yeah, in a sense, free will exists. But that yes is dependent on how you define free will. So yeah, I don't see how you can argue against determinism, but I've had all these discussions years ago compatibilist versus incompatibilist yeah arguments tend to get bogged down in semantics or just some incompatibilists being condescending smart asses that's been my experience people coming along with the i know best i'm right you're wrong free will is a superstition you're clinging to a religious idea Okay, thanks for dropping by and telling me that. Cheers, buddy. All the best. Peace. Number four. Does God exist? Probably not. Number five. Is there life after death? I don't believe in the supernatural. I think your death is the end of you. My death is the end of me, the end of consciousness, but life will go on after you and I cease to be. So in that sense, yes, life after death is an everyday occurrence. It is. Number six, can you really experience anything objectively? I'd say there is such a thing as objective reality. Some would disagree, but I'd say, yeah, there's an objective reality as revealed by science, but that's not the question. Personal experience is subjective, of course. That doesn't mean that there isn't a world that exists independently of our thoughts and perceptions. The answer to the question, though, is no. Experience is subjective. Number seven. What is the best moral system? There isn't a definitive best moral system. Codes differ, moral codes, because goals, values and principles across time, culture and geographical location vary widely. I could lay down a moral code here, 
and I could tell you why it's an improvement on the status quo, I believe in social justice and edification, but there can't be a best system for the reasons I went over before, and there can never be an absolute morality. Morals are always expressions of relations. Finally, number eight. What are numbers? Are they human constructs or inherent in the structures of the universe? Numbers are abstracts, yeah? Not concrete. They exist in the conceptual world, the world of ideas. Now, go and read fundamental questions of ontology while resting your chin on your hand and then do a thousand yard stare while thinking oh so deeply about your own existence and your place in the world. Or don't. It's your life. I, uh, I wasn't trying to tell you what to do there. Just a, just a suggestion. All right. On that note, I'll be on my way. Take it easy, folks, and I will see you next time.